In today's magazine, an ode to coffee. Get the details on an upcoming festival of the bean. Then we turn our focus to the environment, from what you can do to decrease the effects of climate change to predicting the weather. I'm Adrian Atkinson. Stay tuned for more. Hey there. So, did you know that plastic bags were introduced to supermarkets in 1977? The production of plastic bags are toxic to the environment as the process involves the use of petroleum, natural gas and other chemicals. 160,000 plastic bags are used globally every second and 5 trillion are produced yearly. Side by side, they can encircle the world 7 times. Plastic degrades after 700 years and will only fully degrade in 1,000. This means that all the plastic that has ever been produced has not degraded. It remains toxic even after it breaks down. 13 million metric tons of plastic end up in the ocean every year, and at least 800 species worldwide are affected by marine debris, of which 80% is plastic and is mistaken for food by turtles, fish, and other marine life. Research has shown that fish caught for human consumption contain plastic nanoparticles. An average family will use 60 plastic bags on four visits to the supermarket, and only 1 to 3% are recycled worldwide. Play your part in advancing your welfare and that of the earth. Support the ban on plastic. Reduce, reuse, recycle, and get eco-friendly bags for you and your 1877. It's celebrated all over the world as one of the best brews, Jamaican coffee. And you can join in the celebration by heading up to the Blue Mountain Coffee Festival. Find out more on the event next. It was a magnificent festival, which saw more than 1,000 patrons, 37 booth holders, and 64 farmers participating in a three-day celebration of all things coffee. Here we are today, launching the second annual coffee festival following last year's hugely successful inaugural event. This year promises to be bigger and better. We'll be having the seminars Starting on day one, we will again be doing our educational seminars to the farmers throughout uh, both those who produce Jamaica Blue Mountain Coffee as well as High Mountain Coffee. And this year, the seminars will be held at UTEC, and we are trying to increase the numbers. So we thought we'd bring it a little closer in so we can get more farmers to participate, and we're very excited for that. We will also be having again this year our barista competition, and we'll be having other seminars geared towards our patrons, introducing you to the history of coffee, how to make a perfect brewed cup of coffee. On day two, we go up to Newcastle for the festival marketplace, which will have coffee and coffee-infused products. We heard some of the things we had last year, coffee scrub, we had coffee-infused pork and chicken, and we had coffee rice, coffee bami, coffee flour, coffee ice cream, you name it, we had it, coffee cake, coffee liqueur. So there is going to be a lot of coffee um, in various varieties and forms. And then on day three, we will be celebrating our Blue Mountain Culinary Trail. We have 14 stops along the trail, um, going all the way over to Blue Ridge and Mavis Bank, as well as we'll have Raft Jam Cafe, Blue Strawberry Hill, Crystal Edge, Belcourt, Brighton Estate, Heritage Garden and Cold Spring, Gap, and Hollywell. Hollywell this year will be having Misty Bliss on the same weekend as the coffee festival. So it's really going to be a full weekend of activities. Finishing at around 6 p.m. including a concert. Parking is at UTEC. At UTEC, not anywhere along the road. <laughs> Not anybody close to Newcastle. We had a lot of challenges with that last year and we ex expect increased numbers. So with the support of the police, if you park, you might not see your car when you come back. On Sunday, there is no shuttle service from UTEC. Parking will be at Newcastle on Sunday. Pre-sale tickets will go on sale. It's 1,500 for adults. We'll also have children price tickets. 
as well as if we're not sold out before, we will have tickets on sale at UTEC. This coffee festival is just one of the many tools that will be used to continue to grow and build the awareness of the Jamaica Blue Mountain Coffee. Jamaica Blue Mountain Coffee Festival then represents the coming together of two of the country's most important economic industries, tourism and coffee. A creative concept to showcase our rich coffee tradition, diversify our tourism product and extend tourism's benefit to the coffee community. There's more information on the event at jamaicacoffeefest.com. We have Community Notice Board next. Do you perform poetry, music, drama, or comedy? Then show off the God in you at the Jamaica International Faith Festival's Open Mic. The event will be staged on Friday, March 1 at the Jamaica Youth for Christ Auditorium at 2 Acadia Avenue. Register now at gifffestival.com. Put your talent on display and win prizes. The Emmanuel Apostolic Church Sydenham presents 2019 Prayer Conference. Learn how to pray through to break through and remove the veils. This will be held on March 6 and 7 at the Sydenham Resource and Cultural Centre, Central Avenue, Sydenham. All are invited. From March 2 to 20, Behold the Lamb at the Central Jamaica Conference of Seventh-day Adventist Gospel Explosion. Sundays to Thursdays, the event starts at 7 p.m. and 9 a.m. on Sabbath. If you're interested in learning a new skill, show up and participate in free Heart Trust NTA training courses. So come out and be blessed and trained under the Big Tent at 58 Brunswick Avenue. Stronger hurricanes, severe flooding, longer drought periods, the effects of climate change which have all had an impact on our tiny island. The Earth's atmosphere is changing, and it's not for the better. The good news is everyone can play a part in preserving the planet for future generations. Here's how. Adapting to climate change means taking actions that reduce its impact on humans and the environment. What we do around our homes, schools, work and communities can help to reduce negative climate impacts. Taking action to reduce these impacts is not as difficult as you may think. There are some actions which require lots of money or skills. However, there are other simple steps you can take. Install hurricane straps on roofs or build with slab roofs to reduce damage to homes, schools and other buildings during storms. Catch rainwater in drums for use in your garden or household. Install drip irrigation to conserve precious water on your family farm during periods of drought. Installing gabion baskets to prevent or reduce soil movement, especially during sudden heavy rainfalls after an extended dry period is a good measure. Dispose of garbage properly so it does not end up in our drains and gullies. Block drains and gullies make it harder for water to flow during heavy rainfall. This results in flooding. Finally, use climate smart building designs that allow buildings to remain cooler even as temperatures increase. Climate change mitigation can remove, reduce or even prevent greenhouse gas emissions into the atmosphere. Plant more trees to remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. Use renewable energy sources such as wind and solar to reduce the amount of carbon dioxide that enters the atmosphere in the first place. These are good examples of climate change mitigation measures. Let's conserve energy. Switch off lights when not in use. Unplug appliances such as TVs and computers after use. 
Switch to energy efficient appliances and light bulbs. Put energy saving timers on your refrigerators. Saving energy will save you money in the long run and reducing fossil fuel use will lower the amount of greenhouse gases that enter the atmosphere. If each Jamaican practice these actions, together we will help our country deal with the many damaging effects of climate change. Achieving the transformation our country needs will require households, community-based organizations, government, and the private sector working together to raise awareness for positive changes in behavior and policies to minimize the negative impacts of climate change. Do your part. The National ID system will register your picture and fingerprint. It will not need an iris scan unless you don't have a fingerprint and will only take a footprint if you can't give an iris scan or a fingerprint. This will help people with disabilities to get a national ID. NITS is about inclusion, not exclusion, protecting the rights of all Jamaicans. Get the facts at nidsfacts.com. Well, the whole business of weather prediction and weather forecasting is really a complex business. So what the Meteorological Service does, along with many other meteorological services right across the globe, is that we do regular observations of the weather. It starts, first of all, by assessing what the current weather conditions are. We try to find out how much rainfall is being detected at that point in time. We are assessing wind speed or wind direction and the atmospheric pressure is detected. The temperature is also sensed as well as the humidity at any location. We have the automatic weather stations and we have over 80 of them right across the 14 parishes. Apart from these instruments, we have visual observations that are done by meteorological technicians and they do observations of the cloud cover, the, the, the wind conditions. They view the visibility, um, how far they can see in the distance. There are many parameters that are measured just by using the senses. We have our Doppler radar. It shows us where across the country rainfall is actually occurring at any point in time. We also sense what is happening in the atmosphere above the ground. So this is where our weather balloon comes into play because that weather balloon is released twice every day in Jamaica to assess the atmosphere using a bit of equipment that is attached to that balloon. There are also like buoys that are in the ocean. They are sensing weather conditions. We have some ships that are equipped with, with stations that bring in information. There are pilots that send in information via aircraft. Then what we do with that information afterwards is that all of it goes into numerical weather prediction models. It gets crunched by a supercomputer. It sends back now some model data that tells us what is expected to occur. But of course, we don't rely entirely on the technology because the experience of our forecasters is also important. We then have to sit down and assess what is really happening to the atmosphere. Using the local knowledge, using our understanding of the topography of the island, where the hills are located, where we're likely to get the land breezes and the sea breezes. All these things we have to take into consideration when we come up with a forecast for any specific point in Jamaica. It is a complex process, but that is how we in the Met Service actually forecast our weather conditions. Good weather permitting, a road trip is a great way to find out about the history and culture of this beautiful island. But if on an easy Saturday like this, all you want to do is sit back on your couch and relax, we'll bring the history and culture to you. Watch this.
When you hear the names of places like Old Harbour, Spanish Town, Bogwalk, what is the one thing that they all have in common? They are in the parish of St. Catherine, and St. Catherine is my parish, it's my home, and it is also the home of Jamaica's first free black community, Sligoville, the third longest river, Rio Cobre, and some of the oldest bridges. The historic cast iron bridge is 81 feet long and 15 feet wide. It was built in 1801 and is said to be the oldest of its kind in the Western Hemisphere. Today we take a look at some of the things St. Catherine has to offer. So join us on our journey through this historic parish. be a beach and the best beach, the best community. Fish them proper, everything that's good. Original fish you have over here, no bomb fish. We large, you hear, extra large. We think shot over here, you hear. We're in the farming district of Colbeck, visiting the Colbeck Castle. Though the castle is just in ruins, the walls still stand. So let's take a journey through it. The origins of Colbeck Castle are shrouded in mystery. There is very little reference to it in the early records, but it is believed to have been built at the end of the 17th century when Jamaica was seized by the British. Colbeck Castle is among the oldest plantation houses in Jamaica. Mirpen Poros, one already, two alright. That may not have been their exact words. But all were aboard this very station waiting to travel either east or west of the island via the old harbour train station. Today, this Georgian style structure, though broken, still stands and the train still traverses its tracks carrying Jamaica's precious commodity, bauxite. But that one shipment of bauxite moved from Old Harbour and passes through the historically shaped Spanish town then on to the famous Aki Commerce area of Linstead. By now you would have probably figured out where we are. We are at the Flatbridge, and I read that the Flatbridge is sometimes called the 16 mile walk. Why you may ask? That's probably because in the 1700s, the 16 plantations surrounding the Bogwalk area had to send one in every 50 slaves to work on the river road. Before there was the highway, whenever the Rio Cobra overflowed its banks, motorists had to travel through Sligoville, the same Sligoville that was the first free black community in Jamaica. Sligoville is a community that is made up of some smaller communities. But Sagoville is the hub. Sagoville is the base where all, most of the historical activities took place. We are standing on one of the 30 acres of land that were distributed as free villages. That is one house that is supposed to be using from that, those days. But what happened is that when, during slavery, the slave master used to live up on the top part and below it, yeah, they have a little cultivation for the slave. It has all the attributes of a house being used at that time. Because they have walk and dab and things like those. So it's one of the old time houses. Our journey today ends here in Riversdale, the home of the Natural Bridge. This area, we used to play Pokinas, Kipati, and stuff like that. We, 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 there's a cave that can lead you to about 20 miles, about 18 miles from here to a next district they call Crawl. What is Pokina? These are, it, 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 it's like a card pack, mm -hmm. right? But it, it's a book, like a bingo book, mm -hmm. with all the, the, the cards on it. Like the, 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 the queen, the art, but it's a big book <laughs> where you use stone and mark it. 
and you pick those card, pick that card back. Mm -hmm. And when you pick that card back, the number that come up, if you have it, just like bingo. So bingo is a newer version than a Pokina. Yeah, yeah. Well, the natural is a great person, as you can see. It's the eight wonders, and it's built out of strictly stones. No, no addition. It is just stone, so it's natural. It's just natural. So I'd like people to explore it, see what it's all about, and they can see it for themselves. One hundred and seventy-seven steps later, and we're finally back at the top. So, guys. What you've just seen is just a little bit of St. Catherine's history. The parish has a lot more to offer. So guess up, gear up, go on go the road now. I've been around just over, well, the years are not important. The point is, I've met a lot of eccentric people with unique personalities, ideas, and talents. But I learned just today that Breatharians live among us. I know it sounds out of this world, but it isn't, as Breatharians are persons who believe that it is possible through meditation to reach a level of consciousness where one can exist on air alone. Breatharians, just when I thought, I heard it all. Coming up next, the news of the week. Hi there, I'm Simone Wolf with your JIS News of the Week. The lower house of parliament has approved the bill to retake Venezuela's 49% shares in the state-owned oil refinery Petrojam. The technical and political persons who have worked across administrations on these matters, the ultimate result has been that Jamaica's energy security has been compromised by delay and inaction. We now need to assess and redefine the refinery's future, and this can only be done by retaking control. We cannot wait until Petrojam is run to the ground, then we react. The duty of government is to see the threats and respond to them. Meanwhile, government is assuring the motoring public that the appropriate legislative framework will be created to ensure that petroleum and petroleum products received into the market are safe and conform to international best standards. The ministry is committed to creating the legislative framework that will ensure not only quality but safety in accordance with international best practices for the benefit of the motoring public. Director General of the Planning Institute of Jamaica, Dr. Wayne Henry, says the economy grew by 1.7% in the October to December quarter of 2018 and achieved 1.8% upward movement for the calendar year. This performance represents the highest annual growth rate recorded in 12 years and reflects the sustained efforts of the Government of Jamaica in laying the foundation to achieve more robust and inclusive growth. He also announced that the total number of employed persons increased by 14,400 at October 2018, while the unemployment rate was 8.7%. We estimate GDP growth for fiscal year 2018-19 in the range of 1.5% to 2%. The performance in the final quarter of the fiscal year will be buoyed by the continued robust performance of the mining and quarrying industry 
as well as continued strengthening in the construction industry. Meanwhile, Bank of Jamaica Governor Brian Winter this week reported that the country's macroeconomic prospects remained positive as key indicators and outputs continue to show signs of recovery. Overall, Jamaica's macroeconomic indicators continue to reflect entrenched stability. Foreign reserves are above the level deemed adequate and the current account deficit remains low and sustainable. Market interest rates are at historic lows and fiscal performance continues to be strong. Education Minister Senator Royal Reed says provisions are being made for special needs students sitting the primary exit profile PEP exam on February 26. There are 304 students um, who have applied for special support. Um, they would have submitted psychoeducation reports and these have been evaluated by the special education unit. The recommendations which have been made have been communicated to approximately 95% of these students. Garbage collection across the country will be significantly improved as the National Solid Waste Management Authority has received 11 new compactor trucks valued at over 1.7 million US dollars. Meanwhile, higher fines are coming for persons who breach the Anti-Litter Act. Local Government Minister Desmond McKenzie says in the coming weeks, Cabinet is to review a resubmission of the amended legislation. Sometimes you have to juke somebody where it hurts. And when people start to feel a little pressure in their pockets, or even look at doing some prison time, then people will start to think differently about their civic responsibility. And finally, the state will be acquiring two additional shelters for abused women in the 2019-2020 fiscal year. And so we will have um, a shelter that would um, assist or provide uh, coverage for women in the mid-island mid and also in the east of the island and in the western end of the island. And those are some of the stories making news this week. I'm Simone Wolf. Do you have a loved one, friend or client who passed away since 1998? The Electoral Office of Jamaica needs your help to update the voters list with information for these persons, government agencies, churches, insurance companies, hospitals and funeral homes, and you the public. We want you to provide us with the records to confirm the status of these persons. Call the EOJ at 888-991-VOTE or visit the nearest EOJ office. For more information, visit our website at ecj.com.jm. This is where today's show ends, but if you want more Jamaica Magazine, stop by our YouTube page on the JIS website. Give us some love in the social media sphere by visiting our pages and giving us a like. I'm Adrian Atkinson. On behalf of the entire production team, do take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.